Hi, look what I've got. Two 6,000 watts outdoor infrared heaters, one from Infratech and one from Bromic. And I'm gonna tear them apart and understand their differences. Well, see, Infratech saw my previous videos where I installed one of their heaters and decided to sponsor this video and have me compare the two brands. So I assume they think I'm very knowledgeable around heaters, which what means the they okay, haven't seen my video making a seat warmer. <laughs> where the f is it? <laughs> Good. But anyway, I told them if I'm comparing two brands, I have to be fair. I can't be paid to knock down one brand against the other. I have responsibility to my viewers. I have integrity. To which they said, oh, do you? Just kidding, they didn't say that. But they said, well, we do want a fair comparison too. So do as you wish. But what if you pay me and I figure your product is not better? Ah, we are confident you'll find it better. Oh, will I? <laughs> okay, let's do it. I warned you. So there we are, two heaters, which are basically two giant resistors getting hot. I mean, how different can two resistors be anyway? For the love of God, they shipped it to Medhi. Nice packaging. Oh my God, I was just gonna grab this and pull it out. I think these long things are the heating elements. They are fragile. <laughs> There we have it. I thought it would be matte black, but it's a little lighter and there is a grill in front of it and the reflector behind it, if you can see, is covered in a little bit of white dust that is probably coming from the insulation material. You have to wipe it off. Remove the front cover of the heater. How? Oh, screws. Wipe off the reflector. You want to maximize the reflection. Now that we have the heater open, I bought this tool that can help me find the profile of corners and stuff. What I'd like to do is to get a profile of the reflector and transfer it on a piece of paper. Wires look nice. Now I need to pick up the elements. I think I need gloves. There we are. This is the scary part, taking the element out. There we are. It is basically made of quartz with tungsten filament inside of it. I feel like I may break it any time now. Please don't break. What? It's longer than the frame? They didn't make it any easier. Okay. The first element is done. To the second one. The second one is into. Now we close the brackets and tighten the screws. These brackets are like guillotines on the element. No wonder they didn't come pre-installed with these sharp edges sitting on the quartz. In transport, they would probably break off. Let's take a profile with the elements now and transfer. And now, we can close it up. Okay, back in the box. Let's do Infratech now. Come on, Infratech. Please be easier. Oh man, I have to assemble this one too. On the plus side, I get to profile the reflector. I say it's almost identical curvature compared to Bromic. Well, let's hope it's easier to assemble. Remove these. This is very similar installation process compared to Bromic. Although I should say I like the quality of this bracket much better. There you go. The elements. There we go. Let's compare Infratech elements to Bromic. Well, they are taller. Visually the same quality. Well, longer and more flexible wires here, easier to install. First one is done, and I should say quite easily. Was wire flexibility that important? In Bromic, I was pushing the elements in their locations much harder because of the non-flexible wires, which gave me more anxiety. I thought I might break the elements. Well, I'm telling you, they fall in place much easier. Whoop, and whoop. Now we profile this one. 
Come on, man. The two heaters are exactly the same. They do also have a guard they call Motif that easily drops in. You just have to bend it a little bit. Done. I guess they are some good looking giant resistors. Right off the bat, of course we need these guards to prevent accidentally touching the hot elements. But Bromix grids are covering a much larger surface area. Maybe they thought it was safer or doesn't make a difference? I guess we have to test. Frankly though, I think Bromix has a much more uneven paint job compared to Infratech. And I like the fact that the insulation is not sticking out in Infratech. I'm not sure if I'm biased because Infratech is paying me, but for some reason I find theirs more sexy. Well, let's turn them on. These are a total of 6000 watt resistors on 240 volts, which means 25 amps. Luckily, I installed a 240 volt outlet here on a 30 amp breaker I can plug them in. And I have some 10 gauge wire here I could use, but no plugs. Although these wires are so thick, I can probably just directly plug <laughs> You must always make sure to connect the other end of the wire securely before plugging anything into the power lines. So let's do that. So each unit comes with a pair of live and neutral wire connections, one per element. So you have the option of turning on only one element if 3000 watts is warm enough for you. Infratech has picked 12 gauge wires, which is more than enough since each element draws 12 and a half amps. Bromic has picked even thicker wires. Each one is enough to run the entire heater. That's that's why they are much less flexible. Here I'm going to hold the wires together with some alligator clips. Which is quite a dangerous thing to do, but this is a lab test setting that I want to measure voltage in. Okay, let's do it. Well, nothing is shorted here. Let's plug. Ouch! Very fascinating. I was plugging in this wire, which is connected to one terminal of the element, coming out of the other side of the element and connecting to the body of the heater which I was touching here which gave me a shock. If there is a way, electricity will find it. So avoid stupid setups for God's sake. I think I have some gloves here that hopefully can save me to some extent. <laughs> My glove is touch enabled. Don't try this at home! <laughs> ah, it's nice and warm. It's going to set things on fire. Forget about it. Let's do it differently. Well, I'm sure they both create a ton of heat, but Infratech paid me, so they are clearly better. No, I'm joking. Let's go back to the drawing board and try to understand the electric heaters better. Let's see. Inside the closed room, the heating is done by heating the air that circulates inside the room, creating a warm, comfy ambience. But outdoor, in an open space, this is absolutely useless, because hot air goes up and escapes and cold air replaces it. You would have a constant cold wind. So the ideal outdoor heater must not heat air at all, and instead must focus on radiating heat as infrared, which can heat up any surface it shines on, like your skin and clothes. So any energy spent heating up the body of the heater and the air around it is a waste and inefficiency. The goal is to maximize the infrared radiation. Also, it would be nice if we could selectively shine where we want, like 5G. Future tech. The radiation from the heating element goes in all directions. Heater has these parabolic reflectors to reflect the radiation back down where you want to heat. No reflector is perfect though, it absorbs some of the energy and wastes it. They also put guards in front of elements to avoid touching the hot elements, which also absorb and waste energy, especially since both brands painted them black. Actually, couldn't they at least make the side facing the elements reflective? There are two important factors I can think of, beside the beauty factor. How warm a heater makes you and how far away you can see it and still feel warm. Because the further you are from the heater, the colder you feel. Good news is Bromic has provided their own comparison sheet to heater salespeople, comparing the two brands summarizing the important factors. Bromic compares. There is no comparison. Bromic heat coverage area is 160 square feet. Infratech is only 110 square feet. Lifetime warranty. 
two-year warranty. Designed for style and performance, aesthetically unappealing. Available in black and white finish, silver standard color. Certified for a bunch of standards, not CSA certified. Wow, Bromic is better, or is it? Well, I did some of my own research. I should say the document is referring to Infratech WD series and my heater is CD series, which is lower profile. Other than that, both have identical reflectors and elements, so exact same performance. In Bromix manual, it says the heater covers 144 square feet. And Infratech says 11 by 11 that multiplies to 121, not 110. Lifetime warranty has an asterisk, which is 7 years from the date of purchase. And their website says 7 years for element only. Everything else is only 1 year. Infratech says 3 years on everything. And for the looks, well, I liked Infratech better. But since I might be biased, I also showed it to my wife and daughter without telling them which is which. And they both picked Infratech. So, silver standard color only? Well, I have the black one and also apparently Infratech provides their heaters in virtually any color you want and also different motif designs. Ceiling recess kits, not CSA certified? Well, CSA is a globally recognized Canadian standard, which is good to have, but all Infratech products have a bunch of UL certifications, which are globally recognized American standards. So this comparison is rubbish. Come on, man, I know companies need to compete, but customers won't benefit from misinformation. What happened to fair competition? Actually, let's contact Bromic and ask some questions about their heating area. Hello, and thank you for calling Bromic Heating for Heat Design Layout Assistance. Bromic Heating, this is Eric. How can I help you today? Hi, uh, I have some questions for you. Uh, looking at your uh, tungsten model, and I was comparing it to your competitor, Infratech, and one of the guys I talked to fortunately provided me with this document that compares the two products. So I don't know if you can pull the document up on your side. I, I know which one you're referring to. The document says the tungsten model covers 160 square feet compared to the Infratech that does 110. So we have, a, we have a patented parabolic reflector in the back of the unit. That's that little glass reflector that you, you see, it kind of looks like a mirror. Because nobody can, else can make our, our style of reflector, we have the best reflector on the market. It's able to reflect more infrared waves into this space than other units. You have a grid in front of the heater. Doesn't that block the infrared energy? It does not. It actually uh, it allows it to to spread the infrared waves, the, the heat out properly. So you are saying that your grid does not block any radiation? Infrared heat? No, it doesn't. Now, how does it do that? You'd have to talk to engineering on that. I can give you our service team's email as well for those uh, other questions. Thank you very much. Yeah, no worries. Well, he was a nice guy. So they mentioned two important factors. Their reflector reflects more efficiently, which is plausible, and their guard grill distributes heat more evenly and otherwise has minimal effect, which I really doubt. I'll email their technical support too, but for now, let's test. You know what? I'm gonna hang my heaters from my old heater here and test them. Take off the cover first. There you go. Now I can disconnect the power wires. Whoop. Whoop. Ladies and gentlemen, two chains. Hang it from a proper height. Connect the wires. On this side, I try to crimp the wires together. This is of course exposed and wrong and pretty dangerous, but test lab scenario, I want to be able to measure the voltage between them. It is five foot to the ground. So if this heater can cover an area of 12 feet by 12 feet installed at eight feet high, at five feet high, it should be able to cover an area of seven and a half by seven and a half feet. Now we remove all the furniture. Okay, let's turn it on. The switch is in the garage. There we are. I think it's warm enough. Did something happen here? It's working. Maybe a loose strand or something. Look at the lensing effect happening by the hot air coming out of the heater. And of course, all the hot air coming out of these kind of heaters is what I call inefficiency because they just go up and away. Let's turn it off now. Now in an eight feet by eight feet area, I'm going to mark the ground with masking tape every foot.
and I'll measure the temperature at these spots to get the heating pattern of the heater. This area is shaded and almost covered on three sides and there is no wind today, so it should be a good day for measurement. I measure the temperature of the four corners of my area, side of the house for reference in case the weather changes. We turn it on. I'll let it run for a fixed amount of time until the temperatures settle and then I'll measure the temperature difference before and after. Half an hour passed, everything seems to have settled. Now I'll quickly scan all the spots. 229 volts at the heater and around 23.7 amps going in. And now we disassemble our Bromec and install the Infratech. Good. It's all set, five feet from the ground. We measure the four corners again. Side of the house, turn it on and wait for half an hour. Okay, let's go. We're running at about 231 volts and 22.6 amps. Nice and warm. It is burning. Yeah. So after crunching all the numbers, here's what we have. Charts of temperature rise in an 8 by 8 foot area under the heater installed 5 foot high. Infratech, Bromic. Infratech, Bromic. You see the difference? Bromic is a couple of degrees warmer around the center, but Infratech is warmer around the outer skirts. Here, I subtracted Bromic data from Infratech. The outer skirt is positive as Infratech is warmer there, and the middle is negative as Bromic is warmer. And here is the cross section of charts along the center width and length of heaters. Let's see if we can explain this. Let's do some measurements. So per my calculations, Infratech guard or motif blocks 25% of area in front of the element and Bromix grid blocks 32%, 7% more than Infratech. Both block a lot though, which I don't like. Infratech's element is around 12.5% longer than Bromix. With the same total power coming out, this means Infratech is sending around 12.5% less power per length of element. This could actually give the advantage to Infratech's element lifespan. The length difference would have an impact in close proximity to the elements. Further away where heater dimensions become less significant, the temperature difference is less. Bromi consumes around 5400 watts, while Infratech is around 5200 watts. Because due to component variations, Infratech by luck has a little bit higher resistance. So it would output around 3.7% less power. The heater power drops a bit because it won't get the full 240 volts, because some of the voltage drops across the house wiring resistances. Knowing these, let's start from the same level and apply differences. Infratech element is longer, so widthwise at close proximity in the middle it will be colder and around the same further out. Lengthwise the peak is also lower, but due to the longer element the energy extends out and reaches further. Infratech higher element resistance outputs 3.7% less power, so the profile goes down a bit. But Bromic element area is blocked 7% more, so Bromic profile goes down a bit more. And this is what we observe from the test too. So if you ask me, I don't see any magic in Bromix patented reflector and grid. And I tested at 5 feet. If I test it at their proper height of 8 to 10 feet, I believe their profiles would look much more similar. And with the same element resistance, Infratech would be warmer because its guard blocks less area. Bromix technical support answered me too. Here's the response. Let me make it short. Infratech area was measured using unknown test method. We will do back-to-back -back testing later. So there was no point comparing them in that document since the test method was unknown. During product development, any effects of the grid were determined to be negligible. Hmm. Well, that's a bold statement considering the grill covers 32% of radiations. So I put it back on without the grill and I'll test again. Here you go, bromic with grid and without grid. Without grid, the temperatures are higher anywhere from 19 to 28% over the area. That's not negligible. And they also acknowledge the discrepancy between that document and their manual. Well, there you have my analysis. Bromic is not a bad product at all. It heats well and the customer service is very nice and responsive. 
the reflector and grid doesn't seem to do magic as they like to think and somebody decided to put that document out and that wasn't cool. I would personally go with Infratech because I liked its look and quality more and based on my tests it outputs more power because the motif guard blocks less. Especially, well motifs look good but I bet if you go with their traditional guards they should block much less radiation. And they paid me to. <laughs> Well, I have already picked my original heater a while back without any bias. And I guess now I'm left with two heaters that I don't need. So if you are in Vancouver area, I'll leave my address in the description and you can just come and pick them up. And I have two more brand new 6000 watt Infratech heaters thanks to Infratech to give away to my viewers and patrons at patreon.com. If you were looking for outdoor heaters, you can sign up from my link in the description and I'll draw two winners in a week time. And thank you for watching.